What's up everybody, Chris Lee back with another United Destiny Entertainment tutorial video. Hey, check this out. If you're new to this channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell to get more videos like this in the future. All right, so what's up guys? Chris Lee back with another video. What I'm gonna be doing in this video is just pretty much showing you guys how I polish and basically I'm done with the mix. Um, and what I need to do is I needed to basically go back and kind of just touch up a couple things. So I guess you can say I'm not really done with it but i guess i am so i'm going to be polishing some vocals inside of pro tools 2021 there's some rap vocals i just finished up a mix uh, i think the mix sound great and all i want to do is just go in and tweak a couple things that's going on with the vocals that didn't really stand out until after i was done uh doing the mastering and things like that okay so what I want to do is go in and kind of just adjust some of those things and I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Got to get these. Hey, by the way, these Tascam TH200X headphones, I'm telling you, they sound great. They sound great. You better go get you a pair for real. I think I did a video on it a while back. Go check it out. I'll have the link in the description box so you guys can go check it out. Go get you a pair of these headphones. I think they sound great when it comes to mixing. All right, so let's go ahead and minimize this down some, and boom. <clears throat> oh, by the way, you know what I always do? I like to uh, pull up my feed. So that's what we're going to do right now. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. I just pretty much do a lot of tutorials on my channel from mixing, mastering, audio, video, graphic design photography i pretty much do whatever i need to do to help you guys better your business uh start a career in some type of industry that has to do with production and being creative and things like that and also i mean i just have a lot of experience in a lot of different fields so it's something that you guys want to take advantage of so definitely hit that subscribe button okay let's see what we got here <clears throat> All right, let's see. They already trying to throw, throw some ads on the live. All right, so check it out. <clears throat> Here's a dope mix for a dope artist. Uh, he's super talented. I'll have his link in the description box. Uh, this was probably one of the most interesting uh, mixes I've done in a while, just because of a lot of the stuff that he did with the beat production. So let me just go ahead and play some, and then we'll talk about it. And they called him the shooter DNA match in the state prosecutor Charged with murder Didn't mean to hurt her Just win the gavel Life with no future Flashback to it like yesterday I rode up in the park in an Escalade Playing spades in the shade Drinking hard lemonade Everything was okay Till somebody said, hey What you say? I wasn't talking to you And both shot birds say, you too At that point, should've walked away Listen to Bay and get back to play Now the police on the way to investigate The a car fade Trying to be brave Hit his head on the pay Blood pouring from his brain Ear messes on the way but he's close to the grave Man down, man down Put your gun down 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 You try and do the math to the teacher's side You end up counting shots cause the bullets were flying Peeking out the blinds, hearing the signs A knock on the door, police outside He had no idea that his brother was dying All that he know that his mama was crying At the hospital, they in the bed line Praying and praying that he'll keep on fighting So he slips out the room, slide down the stairs Hops in the Okay, so that's something that's on the mix, okay? So check this out What stands out in a lot of the situations uh, That didn't stand out before is Okay, as you can see I've talked to you guys about gain staging Because that's super important, right? Um in this particular case, there are just things that are going on. And let me go ahead and make this, you know, just a little bit bigger because I want to be able. Um, there we go. All right. So we have like certain things that goes on uh, now. Now, gain staging is going to be pretty important in this particular case because there's certain notes and certain things that are like hitting a lot harder than what they need to. So as you can see, I got a lot of things chopped up right now. Because there's certain parts and certain dynamics of the vocals that are just kind of like jumping out at you once you start putting everything on the vocals, okay? So what we're going to do in the process is I'm going to show you an example and we're just going to kind of fix some of that. Gun down. You try and do the math to the teacher's side. You end up counting shots because the bullets were flying. Peeking up. 
like that flying right there. You know, there 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 are gonna be a couple vocals on here that are very um you know inconsistent as far as the dynamics. So we're just gonna hit that. We're gonna hit B. You wanna make sure that you have A Z on here so you can go ahead and create a chop. And this is just gonna help you. You go ahead and just cut this down. And this is gonna help us do some of that gain staging. Gun down. You try and do the math to the teacher side. You end up count shots because the bullets were flying. Peeking at the blinds, hearing the signs. I knock on So even that word right there, you wanna do the same thing. B, B, and just bring it down some. That's all we're doing. Gun down. You try and do the math to the teacher side. You end up count shots because the bullets were flying. Peeking at the blinds, hearing the signs. I knock on the door. Gun down. You try and do the math to the teacher side. You end up count shots because the bullets were flying. Peeking at the blinds, hearing the signs. I knock on the door. Police outside. He had no idea that his. He had no idea that his. Signs. I knock. Now a lot of this stuff. You're gonna, you're not gonna have to like try to do every little piece, but just some of the things that kind of stand out that you can obviously see or really hear. Fly, peeking at the blinds, hearing the signs. I knock on the door, police outside. He had no idea that his brother was dying. So that's not that huge of a deal, but it's something that I want to tweak. Cut it down. Police outside. He had no idea that his brother was dying. All that he know. So if you hear brother. It kind of jumps out when he says brother, so I'm going to cut it down. No idea that his brother was dying. All it, no idea that his brother was dying. All that they know that his mama was crying. At the hospital, they in the bed lying. Praying and praying that he'll keep on fighting. So he slips out the room, sliding down the stairs. Like sliding. Listen to sliding. He'll keep on fighting. So he slips out the room, sliding down the stairs. That word really jumps out at me. So I just want to go ahead and hit B. And you can just go ahead, as long as you have AZ clicked here, and you hit RT, it'll pretty much allow you to expand or magnify, okay? So we're going to do the same thing here. We're just going to hit B, and just cut that down so Fighting, so he slips out the room, slide down the stairs, hops in the whip, runs through a ray, went on in hay, mashing his say, back to the crib, under the bed, looks in the box, down the stairs, hops in the whip, runs through a ray, went on in hay, mashing his say, back to the crib, under the bed, looks in the box, under the crock, there goes the Glock, say, back to the crib, under the bed, looks in the box, under the crock, there goes the Glock, it's about to go pop, back in the car, look at me hard, shoots out the window, shoots the girl in the window, shoots the Do that whole part there. Looks in the box, under the crock, there goes the Glock, it's about to go pop, back in the car, look at now that back is kind of strong so we're just going to go ahead and hit b b and then cut that down and then this one here as well b and again everything isn't going to jump out you just want to use your ears the best you can and just try to polish it it's never going to be one of those things where everything needs to be extremely perfect in a situation but you just do what you can there goes the Glock, it's about to go pop Back in the car, look at me hard Shoots out the window, shoots the girl in the car Man down, man down with your By the way, I'm not really sure who is watching this live If you are watching this live, uh, let me know if you can hear the volume clear and As well as hear me clear as well in the situation uh, That way I can kind of get you squared away uh, Just in case you can't hear me I don't want to be doing a whole live video where you can't hear the audio Shoots out the window, shoots the girl in the car Man down, man down Put your gun down, man down, man down. Honestly, it constantly Okay, boom so, so this is one of those situations right here To where you have a lot going on In this third verse And there's just going to be a lot of things That are kind of jumping out Honestly, it constantly bothers me, the blood audibly Cries in me from the body we Possibly and probably Could have saved, but it dawns on me That self-hate is a dead weight Messing up our mind state We elevate the crime rate We world Okay, so check this out In this particular situation There's just certain things that we want to fix So here, B, B just cut it down some that's it honestly it got same thing here b b boom cut it down constantly and bothers me the blood b b cut that down some constantly and bothers me the blood audibly cries in me that one kind of jumps out 
Cries in me from the bodice we now again the the only reason i'm assuming okay so what happened in the process was the artist went ahead and recorded this song and um i'm gonna talk in my next video why punch recording <clears throat> just in case you guys can't see me i'm gonna talk in my next video why punch recording is gonna be super important in this particular case because a lot of times you try to record and you want to fit everything in there. You just start, you know, trying to record a whole verse or a whole take. And things are inconsistent. Your breathing's inconsistent. Your deliverance or your delivery is inconsistent. You definitely want to take advantage of punch recording so everything don't feel so forced because you're out of breath. Okay, so that's just kind of one of the situations that we ran into with this artist recording this song because... Uh, he didn't do any punch recording, so he's trying to get everything out, and it was forcing him to say things a lot more dynamically and louder than what they needed to be, because he was obviously out of breath. Surprising me from the bodice we possibly and probably could have. That's another one there. Boom. Boom. Turn that down some. Bodice we possibly and probably could have say, but it dawns on me that self-hate is a dead weight. Boom, boom, just a little bit here. And the more you do this, a lot, you know, the faster you'll get in the future. Me, that self -hate is a dead weight. Messing up our mind state. We you know, there's one thing, boom, here. Even here, I can just go ahead and just hit that a little bit. Messing up our mind state, we elevate the crime rate. We world star like primates. You violate, you better hibernate, make no elevate the crime rate we world star like crime mates you violate you better like that kind of jumps out you know here to here go ahead and cut this down make no mistakes we annihilate if you die today that's a mythology no mistakes we annihilate if you die today that's a mythology not a biology crabbing a bucket and all actuality not our reality just a mentality changing modality changing normality who will be in doubt not our reality so like there's things right here check this out so we're gonna hit b and cut this down but if you notice this one here i can highlight it and just hit b it kind of is it kind of get lost so you want to go ahead and do the game stage and turn it up some not our reality just a mentality changing modality changing normality who will be in downside cemetery supersize nationwide gentrify fractify magnify homicide mama cry every i just want to cut this down a little bit Terror super size, nationwide, gentrified, fractified, magnified. Homicide, mama cry, everybody traumatized. Be advised, be realized, all being vilified. I don't want to generalize, I don't want to minimize. I don't want to. Okay, so like there are certain things in here. I don't want to generalize, 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 I don't want to generalize. Again, do not forcefully record vocals um, in one take. Okay, you don't have to do that. Check that out. You hear popping, don't you? That's something that is can really distract your mix and really kind of throw things off. Because once you start adding EQs, compressors, reverb, all these other effects in the master and the whole nine yards, things like this will jump out in your mix. So as you can see, I zoomed in a lot because I can kind of tell in a mix when you see like those spikes and your vocals those are usually mean that there's some type of click or pop in there and it's not going to always be easy to take those out okay but this is just something that definitely makes a huge difference it's hard to fix these at times but there there is a way to do it so if you can hear that that sounds pretty strong to me um let me see what tools i got in here really quick You know, because there, there's ways. So instead of completely trying to take it out, you can also try to write in um, and smooth it out a bit. Could just try to use freehand. Let me see something here. I 
Okay, so this, so the good thing about this freehand is that this pencil tool is you can kind of go in and like fix some of that popping noise that you're getting in that particular vocal. You could just cut it. You can try to mask it, but sometimes it'll be super obvious or maybe a part of a, a a vocal that you need. So if you just kind of kind of go in and just you know write it in a little bit. just to try to but you want to do it more natural so zoom in as much as possible okay and that's that's kind of what we're working with right now we want to try to get it a little closer you can just smooth this thing out just a little bit okay you don't want it to be as sharp. Let me see. Can I use Pro Tools with my newly purchased? Uh, you should be able to. Um, there shouldn't be any any um, reason why you shouldn't be able to. Whatever interface that you have, as long as it's compatible, there shouldn't be any issues with it. I don't want to generalize. 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 Now, as you can hear, that's not as strong. That popping noise isn't as strong. I don't want to generalize. It's something there. I don't want to generalize. But it's not as sharp as it was. Now, there's different ways, like I said, that you can go in and pretty much take it completely out if you just wanted to cut it up. You can do that as well. It's just really up to you. I don't want to generalize, I don't want to minimize I don't want to dramatize, but we better realize That they realize, they can realize That we real die, walk through the fire, call it on Adonai Stand like a samurai Yeah, definitely, uh, let me see uh, Definitely try to, Dr. Rock Productions Definitely try and um, It should be compatible I, I'm not really uh, Knowing Pro Tools to really have a lot of Compatibility issues as far as Interfaces, so that's uh, I mean, as long as you have the drivers installed, interfaces nowadays are pretty much just plug and play. But if you have that thing set up and everything seems to be working just fine, uh, then you should be good to go. But as, as long as Pro Tools can read it, your computer, everything is reading it, then you should be good to go. But if not, just make sure that you find the necessary drivers, install those, and everything should be fine. If I realize all being vilified, I don't want to generalize, I don't want to minimize, I don't want to dramatize, but we better realize that they realize, they realize, I don't want to minimize. I don't wanna so, minimize. like, this is another one of these situations here. Like, if we just highlight, let me take this particular one and just highlight this and hear what we hear. Like, you can hear, you can hear this popping that's going on uh, in this vocal. And sometimes that happens, you know, it, it happens in recordings. Um, and then like if we hit B, let's just go ahead and over exaggerate right now. So I'm just going to take that out as much as possible really quick and just see something. I don't want to minimize. 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 Sounds a lot better. I don't want to minimize. I don't want to minimize. Okay, let me see. Um, no problem at all. No problem at all. Thank you uh, for asking the question. Uh, this this live thing kind of gets. I don't want to use the word boring, but you know when people don't ask questions or interact, then it's you know, I kind of feel like I should just be doing a regular video. Uh, let me see. How can I? Um, how can I get Pro Tools? Uh, the, honestly, the honest answer that I can give you is just to buy it. Um, that's that's what I, I mean. I let everybody know. I don't know if some people at times, you know, are asking, you know, how can they download it um, or where they can download it from. Pro Tools isn't free, so you know, if people are out here getting Pro Tools for free and then pay for it, I mean, it obviously they have to be downloading it illegally or whatever. Um, that you know that's kind of their problem but you know as far as trying to actually buy pro tools or get pro tools then you just go to the avid website and 
you can purchase it there or you can go to like third party uh, sites, you know, or music sites like uh, Sweetwater and things like that. And they'll have it there. Uh, I do know that they have. Um, I think I believe that they if you do Sweetwater and you do like some type of because Pro Tools is pretty expensive. But if you go to Sweetwater, I know that they have like a payment plan that you can do or something like that if you qualify for that. So um Pro Tools is something I definitely recommend anybody investing in if they have the money. If you don't have the budget, uh, I did a video on Cakewalk, which is free software out there. Um, I think that video got like almost 430,000 views and counting right now. A lot of people downloaded that software. They purchased my templates. A lot of people been recording, doing songs in it. So if you can't afford Pro Tools or anything like that, go get you Cakewalk if you have a PC because it's free. Also, I, I mentioned in that video that it wasn't for Mac, Mac users, but check this out. If you have an older version of the MacBook Pro, not the M1 chips, but anything before that, and you can get, um, what is it, boot camp. If, if you can get boot camp on your computer, the best part about it is you can load Windows on there. And if you can load Windows on there, then you can actually install Cakewalk on your computer, which is something that I did. So you might want to take advantage of that because it's free and it's just as powerful as Pro 2. So I definitely recommend that you go get it. I don't want to minimize, I don't want to dramatize, but we better realize that they realize, they can realize that we will die, walk through the fire, call it on Adonai, stand like a samurai, gun with the analyst, move like the Panama, can't be paralyzed, we don't want to fantasize, super to a lullaby, turning on a dime, yeah, we running out of time, that's our bottom line, caught up in the vine, got a freedom mind, revolutionize. I don't want to minimize, I don't want to dramatize, but we better realize that they realize, they can realize that we will die, walk through the fire, call it on Adonai, stand like a samurai. Right there, like it's certain things right there, boom. Boom, hit B, RT to stretch it out. Okay. Okay, let me see now. Boom, okay. Adonai, stand like a samurai, gun with the analyst. Adonai, like a samurai, gun with the analyst. Move like the Panama, can't be paralyzed. We don't want to. Right there, boom. You see those two words? Boom, they jump out, right? So we just want to go ahead and hit B. And we want to cut those down. And again, I'm not doing it from the volume. I'm doing it from a gain staging standpoint or perspective. So I'm changing the dynamics of it to where it's not as dynamic. I'm not really affecting so much the volume. Move like a Panama, can't be paralyzed. We don't want to fantasize, sleep to a lullaby. Turning on a dime, yeah, we running out of time. That's our bottom line. Call the now look, this is what I talked about earlier. Artists, just go ahead. Um, can I, let me see, can I get the link for Cakewalk? Um, I, I can't personally give you the link right, right now because I'm doing this live video, but it is on there. It's one of my videos. Just go through my videos and it says that I can't believe this software is free. Um, it's not the one for Mac, but the one for PC. And it has like, like I said, it has like 430,000 views or something like that. Go watch that video. It'll let you know everything about the software. I'll show you how to pretty much use it. I give you the rundown. It's just as powerful as Pro Tools. And like I said, it's free. So I definitely recommend that you go get it. Paralyzed. We don't want to fantasize. Super to a lullaby. Turning on a dime. Yeah, we running out of time. It's called Band Labs Cakewalk. Turning on a dime. Yeah, we running out of time. Okay, so like there's things right here. Boom. And things right here. Like this one just jumps out a lot, right? So I'm just making that a little bit more even. Turning on a dime, you'll be running out of time. That's now look at this one. This one is is this one jumps out uh, a lot. So if I go back and we check this particular one out, let's just go ahead and zoom in and things like this. Check this out, guys. This is something that you also want to pay attention to when you are recording your vocals and your vocals. Even if I hit this right here. If you see that your vocals are kind of like your vocals are technically supposed to be like this, you know, going like that. If you see that your vocals are, you know, completely like cut off or flat at the top, that means that you're probably distorted or you're probably your recording levels or your gain levels are too high. 
So back either back up from the microphone some or just turn your gain levels down some so you're not running into that particular issue, okay? Because you're going to run into a lot of distortion. And when you have a lot of distortion of clipping in your track, you can't really do anything about that. Um, you can try to mask it and do things like that, but you'll be spending a lot of times trying to cut things out and trying to make things sound a particular way, and it just won't sound good. So just try to try to fix that. I have to go back for this particular artist and just try to fix a lot of these things. Okay. Uh, that's something that's going to make a huge difference in your recording. You don't want your levels to be too low and you definitely don't want your levels to be too loud. Leave yourself some headroom, but always remember, I said in a lot of my videos, the signal to noise ratio, you need to make sure that your microphone is picking up more of your vocals than it is your room tone or your room ambience. Okay. If your gain levels on your interface is too low, then it's going to pick up more of your room tone, especially if you're using a condenser microphone and less of your vocals. Once you start to EQ, compress and add all these effects to your vocals, it's going to enhance, it's going to enhance the loudness of your vocals, but it's going to enhance the loudness and the of the room tone and the room ambience and the background as well. So save yourself the trouble and save yourself the time and just record your levels, voc uh, record your vocals properly going into your recording doll. So when it comes time to mix, everything sounds a lot better, okay? Side super to a lullaby, turning on a dime, yeah, we running out of time. That's our bottom line, caught up in the vine, got a freedom mind, revolutionize when we televised, recognize, decolonize, organize, mobilize, it's a moment to rise and shine. Man down, man down, put your out of time. That's our bottom line, caught up in the vine, got a freedom mind, revolutionize when we televised, recognize, decolonize, organize, mobilize, it's a moment to rise and shine. Man down, okay. man down. Okay, what made this, what made this pretty interesting in general? was like i said a lot of the stuff that that the guy the artist did with the beat okay <laughs> i better bring this up right now guys if you're going to be utilizing loops if you're going to be producing beats or whatever the case may be one thing that i recommend that you do not do and i'm going to show you right now just when the gavel life and no future flashback to it like yesterday i rode up in the park in an escalade playing on me that self hate Crime rate, we world star like primates. You violate, you better hibernate. Make no mistakes, we annihilate. If you die today, that's a mythology, not a biology. Crabbing the bucket. And Check this out. If you notice, there's there's this track, uh, what that's going on with the um, the drums. Okay, guys, if you're gonna be producing your beats, producers out there, do not put your kicks hi-hats snares and all that on the same track and the reason being is because once you start doing that say if you needed to boost the low end or you needed to get more out of the the kick and you try to boost you know you try to boost a particular instrument or whatever the case may be you're gonna affect that overall mix of the kicks snares hi-hats and 808s because you have it all on the same track OK, so you want to be able to have the independent control of your hi hats. You want to be able to have the independent control of your kicks, your snares, and you want everything to be separated. So do not be one of those producers that's making a lot of your beats and you're layering a bunch of uh, kicks, snares, hi hats and 808s all on the same track because they share different frequencies. OK, so a hi hat and a snare or a clap may not have any low frequencies or low mid frequencies right so if you try to put that on a track with the 808 and you try to boost uh the 808 portion of it or the low mid frequency portion of it it may it may affect how it sounds overall it just may it may not be a good sound i had to run into that issue with this artist uh producer's beat because in this particular case he had everything on the same track okay so check it out Flashback to it like yesterday. I rode up in the park in an Escalade, playing spades in the shade, drinking hard lemonade. Everything was okay till somebody said, "Hey, what you say?" I wasn't talking to you. I'm both shot birds. Say so when you start doing that again, you start getting a lot of this. Um, you start getting a lot of this unwanted. Uh, sounds and artifacts sounding like stuff when you start to utilize certain plugins and EQs or whatever to try to make that particular instrument or that track sound good. You don't need to have all that stuff 
on the same track, just go ahead and separate it so you have more control. That way, when you have your kick and your 808, say if you needed to do something like side chain your 808 with your kick. Well, if you're trying to set up a side chain, of course, you can adjust certain things to a certain frequency. But why have all that extra information in there that we're going to try to key to and set it to when it doesn't need to be there? If you just have a hi-hat, guess what? You can put a EQ on it and you can boost the high frequencies or the high mid frequencies if you want that that hi-hat to sound a little bit more brighter. OK, if you want to just affect the 808 and you don't really want it to have as much as body. If you have an EQ on there and you roll off a lot of the mid frequencies, the high frequencies, uh, then honestly, that gives you so much more control over making that 808 sound more rounded. So that's just a little tip that I definitely want to help you guys understand because a lot of people ignore that and it makes their mixes not sound good or it makes it a lot harder in the mixing phase to try to get things to sound good. The other issue that we ran into was, I think he said that he was using like a, like a older MPC style type thing, or just a, a machine that only allowed you to use eight tracks. So once he utilized this eight tracks, what he started to do was he just would switch the instrument and then go to a different portion of the song and change up the sequence and then use that instrument to record on that particular piece of the song. When I first initially heard it, where made things confusing was I would put an EQ, a compressor, and some type of effect on the first portion of that instrument that sounded great. But then when it got to that change up that he had on the same track, it sounded horrible. So what I had to do, as you can see, I got things chopped up and moved around and I created different tracks so I could be able to independently uh, treat those instruments different versus what I was doing with the other tracks. So that's just something that you definitely want to keep in mind. Another thing that you want to also keep in mind is do not record your hook and verse on the same track. They're likely are going to be meant to sound different. They're going to be EQ differently. They probably be compressed differently. They probably have different effects that are not going to be that'll be on a hook. That's not going to be on a verse. So in order to avoid all those problems, just go ahead and record your tracks on separate tracks individually verse uh, dub, you know, hook one, hook two, whatever. That way we can basically pan those things and have more control. Another quick tip that I'm also going to bring up that came up with this particular client. He recorded his vocals in stereo. I don't know how many times I have to say this, but I highly recommend that you do not record your vocals in stereo. Here's the reason why. If you want everything to be in the center, fine. No problem, okay? But here's the thing. When you start recording your vocals in stereo, it's already in a stereo image, which means that you have no control where you can pan those vocals. So if you're going to be recording harmonies, I give everybody advice and tips, and I say record your harmonies Double up on each vocal. That way you can pan and record everything in mono. That way, if you record that vocal, you can pan it to the left. You can pan it to the right. If you record another harmony, you can uh, pan it even wider to the left, even wider to the right. Another set even wider than that. So this is how this is how it is. Let me put this into perspective for you. Hopefully you guys understand this microphone right now. is considered the mono main lead vocal in the middle, okay? And then you wanna record two harmonies that are the same. Boom, one, two, okay? And then we're gonna pan those so this one can sit here and this one can sit here. Now those harmonies are gonna surround that vocal in the middle, giving it a, a nice stereo image. And then when you record another set and you record it two times, you wanna pan that one even wider. OK, so now you got a vocal here, vocals here, vocals here, and you just adjust the leveling and that'll make you have that nice stereo image that sounds very full and complete if your vocals are panned properly. OK, but if you have everything in stereo, there's no control. In this particular case, he didn't give me much to work with because he recorded his main vocal in stereo. Right. And he recorded his hook in stereo. The problem is, is. He only recorded one take, so I'm not able to create that nice full stereo image that I would when a vocal sound doubled. 
do not duplicate your vocals. I'm going to repeat that. Do not duplicate your vocals. If you want an interesting, more textured sound in recording, then make sure that you record your vocals twice, two times the exact same way, as polished as possible. That's going to give you the best results. But a lot of the duplicating, a lot of the duplication things that people like to do, to me, that mask out the frequencies and it really just makes things sound hollow, in my opinion. So if I was to take a vocal and I was to duplicate it right now, it would just sound hollow. But if you record that same vocal twice, it will have a little bit more texture and edginess, giving it that interesting sound. So just keep those tips in mind. And I guarantee you a lot of your recordings will come out a lot better. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so now let's go ahead and listen to this. Man down, man down, put your gun down. 17 and they call him the shooter. DNA match to the state prosecutor. Charge with murder. Didn't mean to hurt her. Just win the gavel. Life with no future. Okay, let me look at some of these comments real quick. Uh, let me see uh, let me see where your content is. Hey, I truly appreciate it. Unreal Village. Truly appreciate that. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to bring y'all some dope content to really help y'all grow. Uh, that's my number one goal. So keep supporting me, uh, showing love, sharing a video, um, sitting down, watching it, you know, it really helps come back to it as many times as possible so you can learn something in the process. Awesome channel, bro. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you for supporting the channel for sure. Um, as far as uh, let me see, Brooklyn culture, how many takes do you suggest we do? Um, send in our track. So when it comes to the takes, do your lead vocal and then do a, do a dub of the exact same thing. Only reason I feel like that would give me or anybody more playing room to make your vocal sound more fuller. Um, and if I wanted to do some interesting thing, or if the engineer wanted to do some interesting thing with their, your vocals, they can then create another track for, uh, two tracks create two more tracks and do like your ending words. Okay. So to give you an example, if this were me recording this 17 and they call him the shooter DNA. So I would record that take like he has a lead vocal. And then I will record another one with the same exact thing. And then I will record two more tracks after that. And I will pan one to the right and I will pan one to the left. But then when I record, I would only say the ending words, every other ending word. So we can make the ending words really pop more in the mix. Okay. So 17 and they call him the shooter. So if I was to record that, I would say, call, call him a shooter or whatever he said right there. And then I will say the next line. 17 and they call him the shooter. DNA match the state prosecutor. Charge. State prosecutor. Every other word I would keep saying that throughout the whole thing. And I would do one take of that and then another take. And then I would pan those in the mix so that they sound a lot better. Okay. Those are things that are really going to help the verse sound a lot more fuller. I know when you go to a lot of industry labels, a lot of professional studios and a lot of engineers, they believe that you should record your rap verse or your, your verse in general, five, six times. I personally think that's nonsense. If you want to go ahead and do that, then by all means you go ahead and do that, but you do not need to record your take five, six times, uh, stacked up to make the vocal sound good or pop in a mix. Proper EQ, uh, proper compression, maybe more compression, some parallel compression and other added effects can definitely make your vocal sit in the mix a lot better and still pop. So you don't need to be able, you don't need to try to stack your vocals a hundred times to try to get it to sound good. And you definitely don't need to duplicate the vocal that many times neither. Okay. 17 and they call him the shooter DNA match to the state prosecutor charge with murder didn't mean to hurt her just win the gavel life with no future flash okay so with this particular client this is another thing that I wanted to point out to you guys and I think I talk about it a lot in my other videos a quick tip if your instrumental is going to have a lot of reverb then if you want to create separation between the vocals and the instrumental then you want to make sure that your lead vocal has less reverb okay and if your vocals are going to have a lot of reverb then you want to make sure that your instruments don't have that much reverb because we want to keep that separation you can achieve that with eq compression side chaining but also reverb okay reverb reverb is known to 
obviously give you that ambience and things like that. But one thing that it also does is when vocals are kind of too harsh, sometimes reverb can mask it. It, it. it just softens those vocals. When you hear people say, man, when I'm outside of the bathroom and I'm singing like in my room, I sound like shit. <laughs> And then they go in the bathroom and they be like, man, I don't know what it is, but I sound so good when I sing in the bathroom or I sing in the shower. And it's because a lot of those reflections of your vocals bouncing off the walls and the ambience is really masking. It's the frequencies bouncing off the walls that's really like masking itself, if that makes sense. Okay, so I feel like reverb has a good job or does a good job of kind of softening vocals when they feel a little too harsh or too upfront or too punchy or too strong. Uh, if I was to completely turn a reverb off of this track, the vocals will be dry. They would be more punchy and they would feel more in your face. OK, I use I utilize a reverb to create the separation around the vocals, but as well as the separation away from the instrumentation. So let's just go ahead and listen to some of this. This instrument right here. 17 and they call him the shooter. DNA match in the state prosecutor. Charged with murder. Didn't mean to hurt her. Just when the gavel. Life with no future. Flashback to it like yesterday. I rode up in the park in an escalade. Playing spades in the shade. Drink a hard lemonade. Everything was okay. Just somebody said, hey, what you say? I wasn't talking to you. And most shot birds say, you too. At that point, should have walked through. A lot of those instruments have a lot of reverb because that's what the, what, that's what the producer did to them. Okay. So what I wanted to do in the process is let's go ahead and go to the mix window really quick. And if I go to that particular vocal, let's go to that vocal. 17 and they call him the shooter. DNA match in the state prosecutor. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and turn the reverb send off. Check it out. 17 and they call him the shooter. DNA match in the state prosecutor. Charged with murder. Didn't mean to hurt her. Just win the gavel. Life with no future. Flashback to it like yesterday. I rode up in the park in an escalade. Playing that's that's not a bad sound you can definitely hear how the vocals separate itself because the vocals are so dry uh and the instrumentation is a lot more wetter you can obviously focus more on the lead vocal because it's so dry but if you want it to sit more in a mix then you need to be able to decide how much reverb you want to send it now when i was dealing with the client before we finally got w done with the final um product of this song at first he was like yo i recorded this song in cakewalk and i just really wanted to have like a bunch of reverb but he didn't use the word reverb i couldn't understand what he was saying and he was like you know i just wanted to sound like you know really really wet or open and then once i got on the phone with him and was explaining to him why he didn't he didn't want to use more reverb or there was no need to use as much reverb as he wanted then he finally understood the concept. So I'm going to let you hear something right now. I'm going to turn the reverb back on. This is how much reverb he wanted, okay? I'm going to exaggerate it because this is exactly how much he wanted. 17 and they call him the shooter. DNA match in the state prosecutor. Charge of a murder. Didn't mean to hurt her. Just been the gavel. Life with no future. Flash. You hear that we reverb? That's how much reverb he wanted on the track. And once I explained everything to him and why you want to utilize reverb and how you want to utilize reverb in certain situations, then he was like, oh, yeah, like after being able to send him something that he was able to reference, I sent him one with a lot of reverb and the one that I did. And once I did it, he listened to like two seconds of it. And he was like, nope, you're right. Stick with the version that you did, because I did not realize um the concept of reverb, how it actually worked and how it had affected my, the way my mix was going to sound for the type of song that I'm, he was going for. And now here's something people don't think about. A lot of you like to use effects because you think it's cool. You think it just sounds cool. That's that's what a lot of you do. You think, you know, oh, man, put a lot of reverb and delay and all these crazy effects on there because it sounds cool. The thing is, is you want to be realistic with what you are utilizing your effects for. So the example that I gave him, if somebody's doing a music video and they're rapping inside of a coffin and they're playing like a dead person inside of a coffin and a coffin is closed, do you think that the reverb or the vocals should have this much reverb? 17 and they call him the shooter. DNA match in the state prosecutor. 
no, the, it, there would be no reason to have that much reverb because it doesn't represent the visual or the, the atmosphere or the space that that person is in. Now, if he was in a hallway, in a long hallway, a big hallway, and he was rapping down a hallway, then yes, this would make sense. 17 and they call him the shooter. DNA matching. Because it's representing that he's in a big open space. So that's why you would utilize that much reverb. But if he's going to be in a tight space, a very small coffin that's closed while he's doing a rap video, the visual, you want the visual, the vocals are going to sound kind of dry and muffled. Okay, so in this particular case, even though that's not the particular case for this song, it, we would obviously want to pull the reverb back to where it sounds more draw, so we just wouldn't feed it that much. 17 and they called him the shooter. DNA match in the state prosecutor. Charged with murder. Didn't mean to hurt her. Just when the gavel. Life and no future. Flashback to a light. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to go ahead and cut cut these other effects off right now. Uh, my other sins for the vocals. I'm going to cut that stuff off real quick. Let me go ahead and cut this back on because I know I'm cutting off every 30 minutes, okay? Um... And then also, let me go ahead and, and cut this off as well. 17 and they call him the shooter. DNA matching. Because if you want to hear, if you want to hear what the vocals, if you want to hear what the vocals sound like, this is what the vocals sound like. Um, dry. 17 and they call him the shooter. DNA matching the state prosecutor. Charged with murder. Didn't mean to hurt her. Just when the gavel. Life with no future. Flashback to it like yesterday. I rode up in the park in an Escalade. Playing spades in the shade. Drink a hard lemonade. Everything was okay to somebody say hey what well, you say I wasn't talking to you and both shot birds say you too Okay so that's what the vocals sound like you know dry so once I start cutting all this stuff back on in general you're I mean you'll be able obviously to hear you know what a lot of this stuff sound like and I and I'm gonna explain also you know why a lot of these 17 and they called him the shooter DNA match in the state prosecutor charged with murder didn't mean to hurt her just when the gavel life with no future flashback to it like yesterday I rode up in the park in an escalade playing spades in the shade you can hard lemonade everything was okay till somebody said hey what now check this out I like the way that the vocal sounds without adding some of the um the doubler and and a separated effect but since he only recorded this vocal one time my goal was to make the vocal sound a little bit wider and more spaced out in, in, in this particular case. So this is what it sounds like without that doubler effect. Even though it still sounds good, I feel like it's just a little thin. 17 and they called him the shooter. DNA match in the state prosecutor. Charged with murder. 17 and they called him the shooter. DNA match in the state prosecutor. Charged with murder. Didn't mean to hurt her. Just when the gavel. Life with no future. Flash. Okay. So now... Now we can find a balance. So I 17 and they called him the shooter. DNA match in the state prosecutor. Charge with murder. Didn't mean to hurt her. Just when the gavel. Life with no future. Flashback to it like yesterday. I rode up in the park in an escalade. Playing spades in the shade. You can hard lemonade. Everything was okay. Just somebody say, hey, what you say? I wasn't talking to you. And both shot birds say, you too. At that point, should have walked away. Listen to bait and get back to play. Now the police on the way to investigate. He ain't caught a fade. Trying to be brave. Hit his head on the pay. Blood pouring from his brain. Him. Messes on the way, but he's close to the grave. Man down, man down, put your gun down, man down, man down, put your gun down, man. So I use this particular effect to make his vocal sound a little bit more interesting again because his vocals he only utilized one track and one track only. There was no doubles, there was nothing to kind of play with. So in order to give his vocals a particular uh, grunginess or particular sound to the vocals and make it interesting, then I added this particular effect to go ahead and, and make it uh, be, be different. Let me see what this comment says. Recording in Logic, do you still master and import? Oh, geez, doesn't matter at all. Um, I, util I usually, Pro Tools is like my go-to for, you know, uh, a lot of the mixing and mastering in general. So sometimes, I mean, I have clients send me stuff in Logic and all these other softwares all the time. And sometimes I uh, just have them send me the WAV files and I can bounce it down and then mix and master it in, in Pro Tools. Or if I'm just in a zone and say if they have like everything already going good for them inside of Logic, say if they have a particular mix or things sound a, a certain way inside of Logic, then what I do in the process is just pretty much um, 
if I already like the way that the mix sound and what I want to do, it's just kind of add on top of that and then go in and kind of tweak things. And if it if I just happen to master inside of logic, then I go ahead and, and master inside of logic. If not, uh, then, you know, I move everything could transfer everything to Pro Tools. But Pro Tools is going to be the quickest, um, most efficient way for me to get a lot of the mixing and mastering done. But if I have to do it in other softwares or DAWs, I've, I've done it in so many other DAWs in general. I might stick to that software. But for me, if, if you ever want to send something to me to get mixed and mastered, then I definitely recommend that if you have Pro Tools, send me the session. If you don't, then send me just a plain audio wave files, individual wave files of each track. Don't even bother with stems. Like just send me each individual wave file in a folder and then I can go ahead and import that inside of Pro Tools and start getting to work and doing my thing. 17 and they call him the shooter DNA match in the state prosecutor Charged with murder, didn't mean to hurt her Just win the gavel, life with no future Flashback to it like yesterday I rolled up in the park in the Escalade Playing spades in the shade, drinking hard lemonade Everything was okay, just somebody said Hey, what you say? I wasn't talking to you And most shot birds say, you too At that point, should have walked away Listen to bait and get back to play Now the police on the way to investigate He ain't caught fade, trying to be brave Hit his head on the pay, blood pouring from his brain you know, is on the way, but he's close to the grave. Man down, man, man, man. Go ahead and solo save this real quick. 17 and they call him the shooter. DNA match in the state prosecutor. Charged with murder. Didn't mean to hurt her. Just win the gavel. Life with no future. Flash no future. Flash. Yeah, no, yeah, no ad libs. No ad libs in this. Uh, this particular artist, uh, all he sent me was his main lead vocal, and he also sent me just his hook. And check this out. Believe it or not, for the end of the song, he had like put your gun down, gun down, man down, put your gun down, man. Down, so his hook, he had the man down, put your gun down going on for like a whole nother minute and a half of the track. And I'm like, hey man, uh, it's your song. I'm only gonna give you my pro professional critique and perspective and opinion on what I think you should do. But I think you should chop this up and completely ditched the rest of the half of the song because it's not needed it's not adding to the feel uh it's not saying anything important you know it's just kind of like dragging dragging it on now if there was a particular point to where he wanted to make it seem like it was the echoing effect of a voice in his head or whatever the case may be then we could do some interesting things so he had this whole thing and i completely cut all the extra up and i said well you know there's this one part here put your gun down like, why wouldn't we just chop the hook up and then put that extra part right there and then fade the song out, which we did. Gun down. There was also some sound effects that he was thinking about adding into the track, uh, which could have definitely helped the track out. Uh, some sirens, some gunshots and things like that. Um, as far as his ad libs, I would have definitely added some type of ad libs, but it's still a learning process for a lot of these artists. A lot of these artists don't come across engineers like me, who's a who's a singer, songwriter, producer, who's an artist himself, who knows structure and arrangement and how to be able to do songs. So a lot of these artists, they just go to their engineers and their engineers just record them just to record them. But when you have somebody who not only understands um, what it would take in an engineering phase, but also the producing aspect. When I record artists here at my particular place, I didn't, I didn't, this guy lives in another state. A lot of my clients are in different states or whatever. Some are even in different countries. Um, when I record artists here, I don't just record them. I guide them and teach them uh, different ways on how to be, you know, deliver deliver better or have more presence or record different harmonies or fix their arrangement or how they should do their runs and their takes or whatever the case may be to make the song better and full and sound more on an industry standard level. That's what they get out of me. So a lot of times when the artists are, are dealing with me, I give them, I give them real life legitimate input. I don't just want to bring them into the studio and let them record whatever just to record whatever. I want you to know that you're putting out a quality song and I want you to know what it's going to take to put out that quality song. So if there's something that's lacking in a verse or your verse sounds too repetitive and it needs to be changed up a bit or how you approach it needs to be changed up a bit, I'm going to give you that input. 
if you have a particular portion of your verse that I think should be the hook, <clears throat> then I'm going to say, yo, cut this piece. Let's re-record it and let's make this particular line of words actually be the hook because it's going to make the song sound better or whatever the case may be. So I'm going to give you all the necessary input that you need as an engineer, but also from a producer standpoint, as well as an artist standpoint. And usually all the artists that I deal with, a lot of their music come out 10 times better just because we go through that entire process. But I'm not one of those engineers that, you know, you come in and... I just let you record, you know, I take your money. I don't give you no input. And then, you know, you go to the uh, get it mixed and mastered anywhere. And it's like, yo, dang, I should have did this. I should have did, did that. No, I'm going to make sure that you have everything that you need recorded. If I'm not the one that's going to be mixing and mastering it for you, I'm going to make sure that you have everything that you need in a recording phase to be able to make your engineer uh, give you the best results possible. You know what? Uh, honestly, a lot of a lot of engineers out there, a lot of engineers out there who who never give input. The truth is, it's because they don't know how they they don't know anything other than just being an engineer, because all they're looking at it is from. How are you recording it? And then how 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 are they going to mix it? But the producer side of it, that's you're not going to get that from every engineer unless they know how music should sound you know that's why people like troy taylor is such an effective um uh, producer because it's not only that he produces but he's able to engineer as well he understands how it should sound and he understands how how it should be um i don't know if y'all know uh vincent uh invincible uh beats watson he's a producer he's done a lot of stuff for cardi b uh almost like a decade ago uh he produced the beat and he was like hey uh, I, I seen y'all's material. Uh, I seen the stuff that you put out. I would like you to pencil some songs for, for Trey songs. And I'm like, okay, well, cool. No problem. Let me go ahead, send the beats over. Let me go ahead and write the song. Let me go ahead and record the song and I'll send it back to you. Little did I know that Troy was there with them. Now here's a positive about that with Troy being there with him. I, at the time, I didn't know how deep Troy was as far as the producer and engineering standpoint, he just understands how things should be heard. Me being a songwriter, I'm like, yo, this kind of takes things, this kind of takes stress off of me because I know that I'm not only just send it, sending this song to uh, the producer, but I'm sending it to a producer that works with Trey songs that's gonna play this for Trey songs that knows about vocal arrangements so he'll be able to tell Trey songs how it needs to be sung he'll be able to tell him how he can change things up he'll be able to tell him what type of effects need to happen on particular portions of the song as far as the EQ the mix the compression the reverb the effects that needs to make the song pop that's something that you don't get when you work with every engineer out there because they just don't understand that concept even if people just I've had people that just legitimately say, yo, I just want to hire you to be my producer because I have an engineer. I like an engineer as much as I would like to do the work with you. I want to be loyal to my engineer. It's like, cool, fine. Hire me to be your producer. And what they do is they'll write a song. And when they write a song, I'm going and I say, OK, this needs to be changed you should do this better. You need to do that better. Um, change your arrangement here. Try adding a harmony here that wasn't there. Let's change this bridge, completely take it out, change out the arrangement of the song, and then add something in there differently vocally, or let's add this effect. Now go back and tell your engineers, since I engineer as well, to try this, try that, try this, try that. And honestly, their engineers will be open to any any advice that I give them because nine times out of 10, they either watch my material or they trust it. You know, they trust my judgment or they can they can hear my music and say, OK, this guy knows what he's talking about. I didn't see it from that perspective. Now, let me open up my mind to doing something different and trying that out. And it works out for everybody. The artist is happy. I'm happy just being their producer. Um, the engineer is happy because he's getting his money in the process and everybody eats. It's just a process of really knowing how to help each other out, help communicate each other, uh, communicate with each other and really get to your end goal as far as putting your music out there. Let me see. Um, hey, eat. 
even even if you can't record with me here, I I FaceTime a lot of artists. Um, <laughs> I'm not even joking while, while they're doing their sessions. And hey, hey, I'm thinking about recording this like this. Or how do you think this sound? Or how do you think that sound? I'm like, hey, that sound pretty good. Or no, let's try try this or try that. Does it sound better if you do this and that? We'll do that little thing. Boom, they'll go back to recording this session. And like I said, send that thing off to me. And it's like, boom, I didn't even have to be there because they were in some other state. So if you ever record or you're trying to do a session or you need some advice, uh, just contact me and hit me up. And I'll be able to try to give you some pointers on what I think uh, can help your song out. If, if everything that you're already doing sounds good, then there's nothing that needs to be changed or tweaked, then we don't need to tweak it. Uh, if you need some work in some areas, then we'll go ahead and do that as well. So that's that's kind of my focus with everybody. 17 and they call him the shooter. DNA match in the state prosecutor. Charged with murder. Didn't mean to hurt her. Just win the gavel. Life with no future. Flashback to it like yes. Now let's go ahead and talk about real quick uh just some of the some of the approaches. If you noticed on his vocals. I have a lot of subtractive EQ, and that means that I had to do a frequency sweep to take out a lot of the high annoying frequencies that shouldn't have been in the mix in general. But I have low pass filter and a high pass filter. Let me tell you why the low pass and a high pass filter is going to be very crucial in situations like this. In this beat, <clears throat> there's a lot of arpeggiators, hi-hats, snares, claps things that's going on in a high frequency. Before I rolled off the top end, I had the EQ to where the vocals were a lot more clear. And the thing is, is that the vocals were almost too clear. And you might not think that that's a thing, but it's definitely a thing. Your vocals can be so clear and so sharp that a lot of the sibilance and the things that sit in the higher frequencies, the S sounds and things like that, they were really just popping out with the reverb, even with de and things like that on there. They were really popping out and they were sharp in the mix. So check this out. 17 and they call him the shooter. DNA. Let me go ahead and just just use this this one as an example. Let me go ahead and bypass this. I'm going to play it and then bypass it. 17 and they call him the shooter. DNA match in the state prosecutor. Charged with murder. Didn't mean to hurt her. Just win the gavel. Life with no future. Flashback to it like yesterday. I rolled up in the park in an escalade. Playing spades in the shade. Drink a hard lemonade. Everything was okay. Just somebody say, hey, what you say? I wasn't talking to you. And both shot birds say, you too. At that point, should have walked away. Listen to Bay and get back to play. Now the police on the. Now check this out. 17 and they call him the shooter. DNA. So this, so the goal in this particular case was to take some of that top end off and ro roll it off so that, number one, a lot of the sibilance and the frequencies in the top end isn't sitting or punching through the mix as much. So since everything else is more brighter and punchy and, and open and arpeggiating and bouncing in the top frequencies, what I wanted to do was roll the vocal off at the top end and then cut some of the low end, making the vocal thinner, but also kind of making the vocal more muffled, if that makes sense, in the top frequency, not so much the low frequency, to be able to help the vocal sit in the mix. That's why I have this rolled off up here. Now, if I turn that frequency off, check it out. 17 and they call him the shooter. DNA match in the state prosecutor. Charge of a... Listen to it. When it's rolled off, you're going to hear the vocal be more... It, it becomes more rounded. When I turn... Uh, when I bypass that that frequency, you're going to hear a lot of the top frequency at the top end really sound sharp and ear piercing. And that's what we don't want to introduce in the mix. So check it out. 17 and they call him the shooter. DNA match in the state prosecutor. Charged with murder. Didn't mean to hurt her. Just win the gavel. Life with no future. Flashback to it like yesterday. I rolled up in the park in an Escalade. Playing spades in the shade. Drink a hard lemonade. Everything was... So it almost sounds as if I'm, you know, trying to take the... the the clarity out of the vocal but i'm doing it for a reason just because i want it to sound different than what the brightness of the rest of the track has 17 and they call him the shooter dna match in the state prosecutor charge of a murder didn't mean to hurt her just win the gavel Life watch this no future. flashback to it like yesterday i rode up in the park in an escalade playing spades in the shade drink a hard lemonade everything was okay just somebody say hey what you say i was when i turn those three frequencies off um, and I bypassed them, the vocals became a lot more sharp and harsh 
and it's to the point to where it's distracting from the mix, okay? So utilizing these frequencies and actually b cutting and boosting or cutting and doing subtractive EQ at those frequencies, it really helps me to take out those harsh unwanted frequencies and still try to reserve what I have in a lead vocal on the back end. And what I mean by the back end, is the aux ends tracks, the final output tracks. I go in and add certain things that I need to uh, put back into the track, okay? So there's little boost right here, little subtle boost right here to be able to give me some of that clarity that I took out of it back, okay? Same things here, S things in the mid-range, just little subtle boost to give me something back. 17 and they call him the shooter, DNA. Watch this. 17 and they call it. What if I decided to over exaggerate right now? Check it out. 17 and they call him the shooter. DNA match in the state prosecutor. Charged with murder. Didn't mean to hurt her. Just when the gavel. Life with no future. Flashback to it like yesterday. I wrote up the day. So before doing all that stuff earlier, that's kind of what it sounds like. If you hear how, how harsh that can be, that's what you don't want to introduce into your mix, okay? 17 and they call him the shooter DNA match in the state prosecutor charged with murder now I can now I can leave that frequency cut that frequency off and then say if I wanted to just do something in this frequency say if I just wanted to boost it so let's go 17 and they call him the shooter DNA match in the state prosecutor charged with murder didn't mean to hurt her just when the gavel life with no future flashback to it like yesterday I rode up in the park in the escalade playing space in the shade you can hard lemonade everything was okay Look how I'm 17. look how I'm moving this frequency and it's changing how that vocal sounds. 17 and they call him the shooter. DNA match in the state prosecutor. Charged with murder. Didn't mean to hurt her. Just when the gavel. Life with no future. Flashback to it like yesterday. I rode up in the park in the escalade. Playing spades in the shade. You can hard lemonade. Everything was okay. Just somebody say, hey, what you say? I wasn't talking to you. And most shot birds say you too. At that point, should have walked. You hear how sharp that is? That that thing boosting that that's what I call frequency sweeping, but boosting it at that particular frequency. If you notice that got really sharp and harsh, the louder it got. So in that particular case, if there if I really had to 17, I'm going to go ahead and cut that frequency because that's something that just just jumped out to me right now, even though I wasn't really using that. That lets me know that that's still kind of a frequency that I don't want. So now that I find it where I want it. I just go ahead and and decrease it or subtractive EQ. 17 and they call him the shooter. DNA match in the state prosecutor. Charged with murder. Didn't mean to hurt her. Just when the gavel. Life with no future. Flashback to it like yesterday. I rode up in the park in the Escalade. Playing spades in the shade. You can hard lemonade. Everything was okay. Just somebody say, hey, what you say? I wasn't talking to you. And most shot birds say, you too. At that point, should have walked. So that's what you would do if you were to do some subtractive EQ or something like that in the process. You would just you would sweep it, okay? Seventeen and they call him the shooter. DNA match in the state prosecutor. Charged with murder. Didn't mean to hurt her. Just when the gavel. Life with no future. Flashback to it like yesterday. I rode up in the park in the Escalade. Playing spades in the shade. You can hard lemonade. Everything was okay. Just somebody say, hey, what you say? I wasn't talking to you. And most shot birds say, you too. At that point, should have walked away. Listen to Bay and get back to play. Now the police on the way to investigate. He ain't caught a fade. Try to be brave. Hit his head on the pay. Blood pouring from his brain. Yeah messes on the way but he's close to the gray okay so, so check this out now that we've done all those cuts and things in the vocals we're going to hear a lot of clipping that we don't want in the track so in order to avoid that that's all you have to do we're going to take those vocals we're going to highlight them and then we're going to hit command f okay command f and we're gonna apply we're gonna apply batch fades, okay? That's just pretty much gonna apply the fades uh, to the beginning and the end of the vocals to where they're not having that clip or that pop, okay? So then in the process, now what I want to do is I can just go like this, boom, highlight this, stretch it out some. We're gonna consolidate that file, shift option three, boom, and apply batch fades so we don't have no abrupt type. Um, come in or clip ship option three boom command F enter boom same thing here shift option three command F boom just like that 
Okay. And they call him the shooter. DNA match in the state prosecutor. Charge with murder. Didn't mean to hurt her. Just win the gavel. Life with no future. Flashback to it like yesterday. I rolled up in the park in the escalade. Playing spades in the shade. Drink a hard lemonade. Everything was okay. Just somebody say, hey, what you say? I wasn't talking to you. And most shot birds say, you One thing that I wanted to bring up. One thing that I like about um, ABU's pitch correction inside of Logic over Pro Tools, I think y'all remember in the last live video that I did, uh, how it how you're able to really just go in and use like the like the flex pitch or flex tune pitch or whatever, and just basically adjust those notes like how you would a melodyne. So easy, convenient to be able to do it like right here in your face to be able to double click it and adjust it in this program, especially using um. Auto tune and a thirty part uh, third party plugins. It's not as easy and convenient, and that part is a little bit, you know, it slows my process down. But you know, it's just one of them things. It's not it's not something that I'm I'm here to complain about. But you know, that's just one of them things. So yeah, this is this is what I wanted to do in a process to go ahead and kind of get this to where it needed to be, and now I can just kind of. I don't even have to bother doing that. So I'm going to go about right, let's say about right there. Well, for the most part. One, two, three. Yeah, about right there. Cool. Okay. And we're just going to, we're just going to bounce this offline. We don't need to. Uh, and down. Um, Okay, and I think we are right where we need to be 16 44 1 and we're gonna bounce both Always want it to be slowest 320 so got highest quality everything should be good. Yep We're just gonna bounce that offline for now, but uh, yeah <clears throat> So I think I think for the most part What you're gonna get and what a lot of these tracks in general with the artists that that you deal with is everybody is going to be treated different. You know, everybody's going to have some expensive equipment. Some people are going to have some um, mid range equipment. Some going to have some low budget equipment. And then you're going to have people that, you know, have room treatment and, you know, reflection filters or they record in open spaces or no treatment. Uh, you're going to have people who know how to record properly some who don't know how to record properly. So in a the process, there is no complete blueprint of what you would do for every different artist because everybody's different. So you don't know how uh, that that's going to play out in that particular case. So you just got to treat every client differently and adjust to whatever music or song that they have. I feel like as an engineer, I'm always learning more and more every single day because I run into so many different sets of problems and issues with different artists that um, there there is never a way that I feel like, yo, I, I'm going to do this same thing every single time. I attack every mix differently and that's how it should be because every artist just records differently and like I said, they have their own set of problems. So uh, I think it's a learning experience for me that I truly appreciate because every artist is going to put me in a predicament to where I have to adapt, learn something new and adjust to how I'm going to approach their particular issue that they bring to me in general. So that's going to be a good thing overall moving forward. Um, what I'm really trying to do now is I'm really trying to deal with a lot more female artists so if you are a female artist a female vocalist a female rapper like i would love to do some interesting stuff and then also i'm gonna be i'm gonna be doing this thing to where i produce some beats um for female artists and i want i want the most talented artists who can adapt to a different beat who if, i'm talking about the artists that you just give them a beat and they say yo i can spit to that i can write to that i can create a song to that and then i want y'all to record it because i want to do a mixing video of showing how I would approach it or how I would mix it. So if you're interested in that, please leave me comments or email me because that will definitely uh, be a go-to thing that I'm going to do. Now, I don't think this is going to work for Pro Tools. I kind of wanted to show you all something just to be on the safe side. But it may not work because I'm using Pro Tools now. But I'm going to try to open up Logic. 
real quick and see if it's gonna allow me to allow me to do it. So um, that means I'm gonna need somebody in the comments once again to let me know if you can actually hear what I'm doing aside of logic real quick because this has nothing to do with Pro Tools, but I'm already on a live video, so you know it is what it is. Okay, so somebody let me know if they can hear this. Something is different. It's different. The way that you're looking at me, I'm boy. Looking. I can tell that you want it. By the way that you're touching on me, boy. I'm hoping you're ready for this. Ready? I'm waving this target, don't miss. I'm about to put you up under my spell. It's about to start off with a kiss. I can be submissive, but tonight I'll be the dominant one. I know you wanna do it your way. It's my game, and I'm hoping you play. I want you on top of me. I need you inside of me. I'ma be the one to control. Can you handle this right for me? Pay yourself, it's gon' get naughty. The way that I'm working in Europe, I'm about to cream all over my body. I like that shit, I love that shit. This is the part when I take that body under my control. Okay, I'm glad. I'm glad you told me that. You can see the the difference between. Uh, the volume levels in this program or whatever. So everything's going to be a lot louder in here. Um, nothing. And I'll just go to the master and just turn all this stuff down because no, this is not even mixed. Okay. Something is different. It's different. The way that you're looking at me. Boy, I can tell that you want it. By the way that you're touching on me. Boy, I'm hoping you're ready for this. I'm waving this target, don't miss. I'm about to put you up under my spell. It's about to start off with a kiss. I can be submissive, but tonight I'll be the dominant one. I know you wanna do it your way. It's my game, and I'm hoping you play. Won't you on top of me? Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. So this is um, this is uh, this is another. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. This is another one of my um. One of my artists in general um, that I mix master I actually actually wrote this song and produced a song for her. Uh, so, yeah, the lyrics are going to be pretty explicit, but that's kind of what we were going for with the song in general. Um, she kind of came over one day and I, I just started to produce the beat. We were doing like some other videos or whatever. And I was like, yo, I got this idea. Like, I need you to like go in, a, go in a booth and record exactly what I tell you to record. Um, and she, she's always been good at that, you know, just kind of, you know, you give her some, some guidance, some leeway, tell her what you want to do for the track, uh, to, to record it as, as is. And that's kind of what we did. So my goal was to make the song really nasty and, um, for grownups. And it's kind of like a game between a, a man and a female sexually explicit type, uh, stuff. But she was one of the best fits to do this particular material because I have other artists and clients that I work with and they have great voices, but that's not, that's not their style. Not saying that they can't do it. They just don't have the sound for it. Um, <clears throat> Drasana definitely has the sound uh, for it. And I don't know if you know, but uh, we dropped a lot of her material. I've done a lot of her uh, photo shoots her beats, uh, you know, mixing and mastering. She has some other beats that she got from other producers, but she pretty much is up on social media. She's ready to go, uh, her social media. So I'll have the links in the description box for that as well. If you want to go check her out, but her music and everything is out there. Uh, she's a pretty dope artist. So definitely support her for sure. Something is different. different. The way that you're looking at me, I'm boy, I can tell that you want it. By the way that you're touching on me, boy, I'm hoping you're ready for this. Ready? I'm waving this target, don't miss. I'm about to put you up under my spell. It's about to start off with a kiss. I can be submissive, but tonight I'll be the dominant one. I know you wanna do it your way. It's my game, and I'm hoping you play. Won't you on top of me? I need you inside of me. So check this out. If you are a female vocalist and I might even take submissions for, for male vocalists too. But if you are a female vocalist and you feel like you can bring 
a different style or a swag that that you know creativity or artistry to this track that you feel like you can get on and add to it then either leave me some comments or email me and let's get the track recorded let's get you your vocals recorded whether you're recording your own space or whatever and send me those vocals and let's let's do some creative stuff because i'm really trying to get a lot of artists to collaborate and do some creative stuff with each other so if you are down to do something like that please let me know um also as i mentioned i got a i got a giveaway coming up so you know right now i'm at thirty five thousand subscribers so i try to do something uh, every time I get a new 5,000 subscribers, I try to do a little giveaway for somebody. So I may be giving away some, uh, you know, some condenser microphones or uh, maybe a plug in or a free mixing session or whatever the case may be. So if you're interested in that, please uh, hit that subscribe button. But also you can follow me on social media as well. My Instagram mainly. Uh, I think my Facebook is maxed out. So you probably can't. Um, I probably won't be able to add you there. But. Um, for the most part, if you want to collaborate and network with me, then go ahead and leave me some comments or just email me and we'll go ahead and get that taken care of. Other than that, guys, I truly appreciate you watching the videos. I hope that you guys learned something. I hope that you guys utilize these tips moving forward. And guys, as always, you know what I'm about to say, cause I hate, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and give me a stream deck for my Mac, my MacBook pro. I mean, I got one for my PC, but it will be a quick thing that I get to do. I'm going to do some cool stuff with a lot of my intros, my be right backs, my um, video starting up soon, all these different things. As far as the streaming side, I'm going to be able to have all that stuff set up like I have on my PC. So once I get all that addressed, then we'll go ahead and take care of that. Last but not least, if you need your songs mixed and mastered by me, please go ahead and email me. I'll give you uh, samples. I'll go ahead and, um, you know, uh, tell you guys the rates, let you know what it takes. If you don't know how to send your tracks or your individual wave files or sessions, I got videos on that, or I can walk you through it in the process and let's go ahead and get you taken care of. So as always stay tuned for the next video.